We're days away from the premiere of Amphibia Season 3, and the promotion just keeps ramping up. As Disney Channel has released a short but exciting promo that may convey a bit more about Season 3's narrative than you realize, especially with Anne's parents. So as always, we're going to run through this promo for any details you may have missed. And to stay in loop with all things Amphibia, please be sure to subscribe to the roundtable with notifications on. With all that said, let's dive in. The promo kicks off with an alternate depiction of the ending to True Colors, where Anne and the planters arrive on Earth, smack dab in the middle of a Los Angeles highway. As opposed to Hot Pop questioning their whereabouts and Anne responding in a subdued tone, here, we have Anne in a near confusion, shocked that she's finally returned here. A lot of cartoon and even some anime tend to do this when a cliffhanger runs over to the next episode. And while I do find it a little bit cool, I can also find it slightly jarring just because I'm a whore for consistency. While I assume these reenactments probably happen due to encouragement from executives, who could be concerned that casual viewers would be lost otherwise, it just throws me slightly off when going from the previous episode to the next. Case in point, we have different dialogue, and Anne no longer has her battle damage from the end of True Colors. This is far from a genuine complaint, but I do want to know if anyone else out there shares the same nitpick with animation. Let us know in the comments below. Domino is seen chasing after a rolling poly within a restaurant, which I assume is from the episode of Adventures in Cat City, which is an episode I have my guard up for because the innocent, fun-loving titles can be the ones that sneak up on you and deck you right in the face. I love how Domino has that slightly deranged, amped up expression that cats tend to sport when they get amped up. I've seen that exact look on my little gooper milkshakes plenty of times when he's in the zone. Being a cat dad for the last year, I expect to really connect with this episode and find all of the jokes to be on another level of hilariosity. Anne appears to be attempting to brush her teeth, but she's extremely fatigued and can't even squeeze a toothpaste without falling asleep, to which we can assume her mother pops up next to her with a toothbrush as they're ready to assist her daughter, which startles Anne as she sends the toothpaste flying. I actually think there's a lot more going on in this scene than a quick gag. Judging by the look on Mrs. Boonjoy, in contrast to Anne's, I get the feeling that we may be dealing with a plotline that explores Anne's parents smothering her now that she's returned home. In a recent interview with series creator Matt Brawley, conducted by Jade King of TheGamer.com, there was a very interesting tidbit about Anne's arc in Season 3 in relation to her family and the consequences of the show's premise. In any three-act story, I strongly believe that the protagonist, in this case Anne, needs to face her past before she can truly resolve her journey. Brawley explains, I think what's so exciting about season 3 is how she's almost a completely different person now, right? She's changed. She's entering her old environment and will need to investigate and explore her relationship with her parents. Returning home is a big theme this time around with many characters being forced to face the consequences of their absence in the face of families who have either moved on about them or haven't learned to accept their disappearance in the first place. Losing people has a heavy toll, even in cartoons like this. There's an episode this season, I won't give too much away, but there are some stories that absolutely deal with the idea that Anne has been gone for almost five months. That has a lasting impact and ripples. Anne Boochoin's parents will be introduced in the earlier episodes as main characters, and the mother will be voiced by none other than Brawley's own which is just adorable. And yes, for those of you who didn't know, Matt Brawley's mother has been voicing Anne's mother since the character's debut. I'm really proud of how Anne's parents turned out, Brawley says. I think they're a love letter to the Thai folk I grew up with. Mr. Boon Choi specifically, who was voiced by Brian Sonalith, I hope I pronounced that right, brought so much warmth and love to the character. He really feels like one of my uncles or something. And my own mother actually provides the voice for Mrs. Boon Choi. Working with her and bringing them into the project was such a huge highlight for me. It's just funny because she was just happy to be there. She doesn't want to be an actress or anything. She's just like, oh, I get to be in my son's thing. Those two mean a lot to me, even more so Mr. Boonjoy, because it's nice to have an Asian male character in a cartoon who is so fleshed out and developed. So, after learning about the horrors of amphibia that Anne endured, and terrified at the idea of Anne leaving again, I could see Mr. and Mrs. Boonjoy having an arc where they never want to leave the dark side again, to an unhealthy degree, but ultimately, they relearn how to have faith in their daughter and put their fears second to her destiny fighting alongside her, supporting her, but not holding her back or necessarily getting in the way, which I'd be very excited to see. It's very cool to witness the parents of a main character actually getting fleshed out and involved with the story this late in the game. You don't really get to see that too often. Recent examples off the top of my head would be Greg Universe to an extent, or Moon Butterfly to a greater extent, but usually the parents are introduced or don't find out about the protagonist's insane adventures until the very last episode of the series. And between Sasha and Marcy, I wonder which of the girls will have parents that gave up on their child coming back completely. 
I feel like the most likely would be Sasha, diving into her controlling nature and anger issues, which would ultimately tie into her upbringing and how her parents have always treated her, which would give more weight to this line in True Colors. Maybe I don't want to go home and rule a school. Maybe I want to stay here and rule a kingdom. We have Sprig and Hop Hop in their human disguises. Sprig appears to be enticed by something in a store or mall, while Hop Hop indulges in the delicacies of Earth, slurping down a steaming bowl of ramen. Next up, we have what I would consider to be the first of many full circle moments season 3 is sure to provide, as we see the servers on Anne's phone return to a full 5G, causing her face to light up in awe and excitement. And with Provo's head sticking out of her backpack, we can deduce that this is from the beginning of season 3's premiere, The New Normal. We've come a long way from Anne struggling to charge her phone in Season 1, and I would love to see an emotional gut punch where, after regaining service, Anne's notifications just flood with missed calls and texts from family and peers, especially her parents, setting up even heavier emotions for their reunion. Anne is seen introducing Hop Hop and Sprig to the wonders of the internet as she whips out her laptop, and these frogs are falling in love with Earth so fast, I can't wait to see their digital endeavors, like Hop Hop exploring the Wild West and his cryptocurrency, or Sprig getting hooked onto YouTube, TikTok, and other social media. Mr. Boonchoy enters the bathroom with a newspaper in hand. Huge dad energy. Early morning is daddy's special bathroom privacy time. But he stumbles upon the planters discovering how running water works. Come on, y'all have waterfalls. You have outhouses. This is kind of ridiculous, but I love it. Polly better hope that that toilet has been recently cleaned. Though it makes sense she'd be drawn to it, as she probably misses her bucket. Anne's in confusion at something. And I just gotta say, the expressions in this season seem like they're going to be top-notch. Some real OKKO OK levels of amusing funny faces. Sprig zips up a hoodie in dramatic fashion, and Polly is assaulting a child in a Build-A-Bear shop. Oh wait, my bad. Construct a carnivore. The toddler in question is holding a rip stuffed animal in half. Did I imagine Polly made herself, thus sparking the beef? And I don't know, does anyone else recognize the toddler as Mary Posa from Star vs. the Forces of Evil? That'd be a cool and cheeky way to reference the series, especially now that it's been over for quite some time. Hop up scars freaking Polly with overalls. I really have no comment here, but now we get into the juicy bits of the promo. Anne's calamity powers rising to the surface. Within the freezer of the supermarket, which we know will be a set piece in a killer robot's pursuit of our beloved hero, thanks to the season trailer, Anne's eyes are shown glowing blue once more, as she appears to slide over to the robot at an impressive speed, causing a blue ghosting effect that leaves a silhouette in her place. It kind of reminds me of Ultra Instinct from Dragon Ball Super, which could very well be an intentional reference, given that Super Anne takes visual cues from Super Saiyan Blue. As Anne comes into contact with the robot, she forms a fist that's encased with a fiery blue aura just like one of her attacks against Andreas in True Colors. Going out the robot's perfect condition in this scene, I'm going to assume Anne deals a death blow here that leaves it in shambles, leading to the robot's reconstruction with things such as a tire, a ripper, and a buzzsaw, which replace a few of his parts, as shown in the trailer. The robot also seems to have transformed one of his hands into a ray, which I imagine is a freeze ray, explaining why Sprig, Polly, and Hop Hop are encased in ice cubes in the aforementioned trailer. I'm very excited to see Anne continue to use more and more of her powers. I don't think we'll see it every episode, but it'll pop up more and more, and ideally accumulate into her receiving proper training. Speaking of the robot's reconstruction, we're shown that exact state shortly after, pursuing the Boon Choice vehicle, firing what I believe to be nails from a nail gun at the tires. Oh, I get it. Disney won't let you use real guns because you're on a kid's network. We're provided with a snippet from Thai Feud as Sprig and Anne are seen screaming at the top of their lungs while Anne drives a family food truck. And I imagine this is because they're being pursued by the FBI agents masquerading in an ice cream truck, as depicted in the new opening. Wrapping up, we're shown a clip from what I suspect to be at the end of the episode, Temple Frogs, as Anne and the Planters are present at Wat Thai Temple in Los Angeles, with destroyed robotic dragonflies littered all around them, one setting off a fresh explosion. Now, with the dynamic presentation of the Season 3 theme song, I anticipated these dragonflies to arrive during a big invasion where Andreas comes to Earth, but to see it happen in its own episode so early in the season has me really excited for how crazy the stakes could get later on. I also think this battle will mark the end of the planters trying to masquerade in human disguises, as here, they're all visible in their true skin, which will either lead to applause and adoration from the citizens around them, or rejection as they shun them not wanting weird frog people who attract danger to the city. For the sake of drama, and what a real-world response may look like, the latter sounds pretty realistic, but we'll have to wait and see. I do hope they don't have to go back to their disguises in the meantime. And the rest of this promo are just two back-to-back -back jokes, nothing really speculation-worthy here, but I'm so stoked for Hop Hop, he seems like he's having a really great time. But as always, these are just my thoughts, and I want to hear yours! What do you think? Are you excited for Anne's parents to have their own arc? What are your theories on Marcy and Sasha's parents? 
let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or tweet them at RoundtableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Austric Fox. We're on both Twitter and Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please sure to like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. See ya!